Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gina Byrne, and welcome to the round table. <laughs> I'm here with Joe Gately, <laughs> Brian Thompson, Keith Brockway, and John Kirby. So, starting off with the Bruins. They won their fifth game, straight game last night in overtime against um, Ottawa team. Ottawa team. Joe, what do you have to say about this? Um, it's definitely a big win for the Bruins. Ottawa been hot lately, <laughs> <laughs> but the five straight games really helping. Um, there was some talk about maybe they'd run out. Uh, uh, they they'd get pretty tired after this stretch of three or four games in a row during the week. But it proves that nothing is going to stop these Bruins right now. All right. Oh, there's a big weekend coming up. Two tough teams against a feisty Tampa Bay team <laughs> and first place rivals the Montreal Can Canadiens. John, do you have anything to say? Uh, they're going to be a tough couple of games, but uh, I think the Bruins can handle it. They've been really hot right now. Uh, their power play killing team has been really strong. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, marching hot 10 goals in 16 games. Brian. <laughs> I mean, if you're scoring 10 goals in 16 games, it's got to be a good thing, so. Yeah, he's really stepped up for the Bruins. I mean, they've played really good team, uh, team offense and defense, but it really helps to have one guy step up, score goals, and be reliable. Are you getting excited about this team as they, lead, as they head into – two months of four games a week. Do you think they have enough depth to continue winning games if they sustain injury to a key player? I mean, a great thing about the Bruins is that they have such great depth. All, all of their lines have real star power. Um, I don't see them uh, losing many games in this stretch, but and I'm definitely excited to see them go on this stretch of four games in a, wait, in a week. The uh, Tuka Rask gaining fan confidence in between the pipes after years playing in the shadow of Thomas. Keith, what do you have to say? <laughs> well, I think he's really starting to step up and, um, you know, Thomas can only be so good for so long and... What? He's on the Islanders. Yeah, and, um... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Thomas, our goalie. <laughs> um, and, yeah. M w <laughs> Joe, what do you got to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, Thomas was great for the Bruins uh, when he was here, but now that he's in New York, Tuka Rask has really had to step up, and he's he's got the trust of the <laughs> of the Bruins fans, and I don't see him going anywhere for for a long time. All right, good solid points here. <laughs> When we had Thomas in goal, people were confident in Rask as a backup. Do we have the game confidence in Rask's backup and um, Kudobin? Um, I think we definitely have confidence in him because he's gotten a few starts when they wanted to give Tuka Rask the night off. I mean, he hasn't played many tough teams, but I definitely have confidence in seeing him in between the pipes if Rask needs needs a couple days yeah are you watching more of less hockey this year due to the schedule of every other day mm -hmm. Brian uh, <laughs> I don't really watch much hockey <laughs> <laughs> at all <laughs> I'm not much of a hockey I said fan not either. to ask me about the Bruins but <laughs> that ship um I I like watching the Bruins a couple times, but I think knowing that it's on like every other day, I don't have to like go and look at a schedule to see when they're playing. I can just scroll through the channels and <laughs> see see <laughs> that they're on. So I'll just watch yep. it a little bit. March is a sink or swim time for the Celtics to gain momentum going into for the postseason. Yeah. <laughs> have been a hot have been hot at home, seven game winning streak at home, going to tonight's tip off against the decent Golden State Warrior team. John? Well, you know, I say. think the Celtics are 
not go, uh, they're going to do nothing but get better. I mean, they traded uh, a guy with a torn ACL and uh, a useless player in Jason Collins for entirely <laughs> 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 uh, a, a very high energy and high scoring uh, two guard in Jordan Crawford. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, <coughs> I think they're going to move up in the standings and get a better playoff seed. All right, so do you think they have enough gas in the tank to do this? Uh, yeah, I do. I think that uh, that although we're one of the oldest teams in the NBA, uh, that the they can sustain yeah. this. Um, yeah, I think they're a great team, and they're going to do well in the postseason. Yeah, especially with the acquisition of Jordan Crawford. Um, it really helps our bench. I mean, he can come off, score, score a lot of points, and... Uh, definitely take a place of someone who's injured like Paul Pierce. Yeah. The Celtics just signed DJ White to a 10-day deal. White, a six foot nine forward, appeared in 32 games for the Shanghai Sharks of the Chinese Basketball Association this season, averaging 21.6 points, 9.7 rebounds, 1.3 blocks, and 33 minutes per game. He played in 58 games last season with the Charlotte Bobcats and averaged 6.8 Six point eight points and three point six rebounds. What do you think of this deal? Well, I'm a big fan of the Shanghai Sharks, <laughs> so this is close to home with me. Um, he did do well on the Bobcats when he played. They weren't exactly the best team in the <laughs> league last year. They were actually worst ever. Um, but now that he's on a good team with some good players around him, I feel like he can function well. You know, it's a ten day deal. They're just testing him out. But I, I think he could be a good acquisition going to be better than Jason Collins. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with Brian. I mean, this guy, you know, he's not going to play 33 minutes for the Celtics, I mean. But uh, outrageous. no Sharks. <laughs> yeah, Celtics, better team than the Sharks. But uh, I think he could come off the bench and uh, help our rebounding numbers. I mean, those stats with the Sharks, sure, that's impressive, but that's in the Chinese Basketball Association. <laughs> I mean, no offense to the Chinese Basketball <laughs> Association or anything, <laughs> but it's it's not the premier place to play basketball in the world. It's here. I mean, he had 6.8 points. That's that's decent. Um, I think coming off the bench, he could be a real, <laughs> real spark, um, especially for someone like Kevin Garnett who needs to find some bench time because he is getting older and he does need some rest. Can't just carry the team the entire way. Are there any other players you would like to see the Celtics pick up? Uh, I'd love to see the Celtics pick up Allen Iverson. Yeah. I mean, his intensity and his devotion to the game is just unmatched by anyone except for, you know, probably Kevin Garnett. But, I mean, uh, he plays the game like nobody else. I mean, he's great. The Celtics can also fix his, fix his personality problem, too. Exactly. They're good with stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that was probably his only flaw. I mean, his game was great, but just the bonehead suspensions and being in the uh, the p papers all the time, it really didn't help his, his team at that point. But Or his team's image. Right. Image is everything. Image is everything. Um, but <laughs> for the Celtics, s some uh, with the veterans in the, the locker room, they can really uh, fix that problem and hopefully bring Allen Iverson back to his original form. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Paul Pierce's neck injury, the 35-year-old, said Thursday that he probably has nerve damage in his neck, and he isn't likely to be painless the rest of this season, if ever. I probably won't be fully recovered from it until the season is over, if I do recover. Paul, I mean, Pierce explained, according to Celtics Hub. I probably got a little bit of nerve damage in the back part of my neck. It's something I've been playing through over the last couple of months. I'm probably as healthy as I'm going to be for the rest of the season right now. MassLive.com. <laughs> <laughs> if you were Doc Rivers, would you limit Pierce's playing time to conserve him for the postseason? Uh, what I would do is, um, well, Paul Pierce isn't a doctor, so I don't know how you know anything about nerve damage. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, if I were Doc Rivers, I would definitely cut his minutes. I mean, I'd bench him, start Jeff Green. <laughs> uh, I mean, I would really like to see Paul Pierce get traded before the deadline. But um, I just wish he would hustle more, get back on defense, and not complain to the refs. I mean, Kevin, 
uh, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, I mean, they have a right to complain to the refs. I mean, they're superstars, but Pierce needs to understand that he's just not a superstar anymore. Pierce is still one of the faces of the organization, though. I don't think he should be benched, just straight benched. I well, love not Jeff straight Green benched, too. but come off the bench, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'd hate to see Paul Pierce do that thing where he just plays one year, a couple games, and another uniform, and just end his career like in like a puddle of misery, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lack. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> so I, I think that we should stick with him. I mean, it's, it obviously hasn't affected his play that much if he's been playing through it for months. I don't think that this is a huge injury, but I don't know. That's just my take. Couldn't yeah. agree more, Brian. Yeah, I agree with both of you that uh, Pierce is not the same person he used to be. I mean, he's getting older. I mean, if he already has an inter- injury, then what's, what's so hard about putting him on the bench for a little bit I'm not saying the entire game but just come off the bench let Jeff Green shine I mean he's young he he had a couple bursts of possible stardom but we're not gonna find that if he's coming off the bench for for the Celtics um I think that you're right Joe I mean but uh what Ray Allen did last year off the bench I mean that really helped us get to the Eastern Conference Finals I mean that just changed the whole dynamic of the team, and I think that that should be a, a possibility for the Celtics. Uh, well, Pierce's time is coming. I mean, he's probably going to retire soon. He's going to try to get one more run in the playoffs probably. I could see it in the next couple of years. Do yep. you think he could be done after this year? Depending on how far they go. I don't think he's going to want to go out on a bad note. I mean, I don't think Paul Pierce has the same intensity as Kevin Garnett does. I mean, Kevin Garnett is just the most intense player to ever play the game, but uh, just a true competitor. But I think Pierce doesn't have that edge. But Pierce is clutch. I mean, he's done a lot, a lot of amazing things with this team in the time that he's been here, and he's been starting for at least a decade. So Yeah, no doubt. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Garnett's uh, competitive mentality, if – if he could, he'd play for the rest of his life. But I just don't see that in Pierce. Pierce, um, I don't see. I I don't. I know that he's done a lot for this organization, but I think it's time where he's starting to think about himself, getting how many shots he gets off game. But I think it just needs to be cut down a little bit. I mean, Paul Pierce has hit some big shots and some pretty big games, but I wouldn't exactly call him clutch. I mean, Ray Allen was the definition of clutch. I mean, getting them through the playoffs. But Paul Pierce, I mean, he just goes to the elbow, hucks up a little shot. And it goes in, and they win the game. <laughs> Most of the time, it ends up going into overtime. But uh, I've always liked Pierce. He's a potential Hall of Famer. I don't know. I've always just been a fan of him. Maybe I it's my Boston blood. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but uh, Charles Barkley said that Paul Pierce was a top ten Celtics, and uh, Kevin McHale completely disagreed, and so do I. I mean... <laughs> Paul Pierce Call is me Sir just Brian. <laughs> Paul Pierce, just not a fan. I mean, with the team right now, would you want him taking the last shot in the game? No. Uh, I'd want Kevin Garnett posting someone up. But what if you're, like, down by three? Who takes, by who takes the three-point shot? Jeff Green, Courtney Lee, anyone. <laughs> Okie doke. Uh, Jordan Crawford now. Great players. All right. Do you think he can make it through without injuring his neck more? Or I mean, yes. uh, <laughs> probably. Seeing he doesn't hustle, rebound, <laughs> back on defense, or do anything but complain to the refs. So uh, I don't think that should hurt his neck too much. I uh, agree. <laughs> I mean, you're playing in the National Basketball Association. There's always room for some freak accident to happen. I mean, people get injured all the time. Ta- lots of t- torn ACLs this year. So, I don't I don't see a lot of neck injuries, but it it can still happen, especially if it's already injured. That that's why I liked Juan Blair, seeing he doesn't have any ACLs. Um, I think he could have come off the bench and <laughs> got some <laughs> good, got some good minutes for Kevin Garnett. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, joke. it's the rest of the season. We gotta wait because the trade let deadline's over. Yep. So you gotta go pursue some young talent. Uh, not injury prone talent in the off season. That's definitely th- the biggest thing in the Celtics checklist. And uh, 
uh, Josh Smith of the Atlanta Hawks. He'll be uh, his contract is expiring, and uh, as we know, him and uh, Rajon Rondo are very close friends, and Rajon Rondo's attitude has been detrimental to the team. But I think if Josh Smith came in, I could uh, I could help Rondo's attitude a lot. I don't know if we're even gonna have Rondo next year after the run they went on right after his injury. It's just I mean, Danny Ainge and almost everyone in the Celtics locker room agrees that it's ludicrous to say that the Celtics are a better team without Rajon Rondo. Yeah, they could definitely use Rondo right now. Um, even though that they're, they've been winning, they've been sustaining a pretty um, consistent uh, win percentage. But definitely having that guy who can go throw out 11 assists, have probably 10 points, that there's nothing that hurts that game. But I think that Rondo's mentality of I need to get this rebound right. or I need to get this assist instead of doing what's best for the team definitely hurts them. But his his scoring his assists that his that's hustle. what this yeah that's what the Celtics could use right now exactly understood all right moving on to the Patriots <laughs> Brady new deal for less money to save but the sports world is buzzing because the 35 year old New England Patriots quarterback is taking a major pay cut three year contract extension he agreed to on Monday reportedly worth about 27 million half as much as he was paid pr- previously. The going rate for the star quarterback is much higher. The Associated Press reports Drew, Breath, Drew Brees takes <laughs> home a cool $20 million a year, while Payne Manning gets about $18 million a year. The New Deal pays Brady less than the four-year $72 million contract with $48 million guarantee that he previously had. So why would the two-time league MVP and one of the best quarterbacks in the game settle Game set, I'll take the pay cut. Well, I think it's just a great thing for the organization. We need to sign Logan Mankins, and he knows that, and he knows that the other players around him are just as important as him. He has a star complex, of course he does, but he's doing what's right for the team, which is great. It shows what a great leader he is, and it, it is going to help the Pats out in getting Mankins and maybe even Welker. Who knows? Yeah, Brian, I couldn't agree more. He's really just thinking about the Patriots right now. He's not a very selfish guy. Yeah, bringing up the <laughs> unselfish thing. I mean, he's ta- he's um he's taken away a lot of money for himself, but he's made money over in the past. Probably done something good with it. Um, Giselle. S- yeah, <laughs> Giselle. Um, but. I think that he doesn't need to keep making 70, 72 million. I think he knows that. He knows that we need to go find some some uh, deep ball threats during the off season. Maybe uh, repay uh, Wes Welker. So that definitely came into consideration as he agreed to this deal. I mean, I I agree. Um, I think it just so shows his unselfishness. Um, I mean, Joe Flacco goes out and wins himself uh, a Super Bowl, but uh, now he's demanding max contracts and just not even thinking about uh, the hole that they need to fill after Ray Lewis has retired. I mean, he's just being completely selfish and greedy. And Brady knows this could be his last contract, too. I know he said he wanted to play until he's 40, and this would get him to when he's like 38, I believe. So he wants to play as long as he can, and I know he he knows that he's not the best quarterback in the NFL right now, the most valuable. He's definitely up there, though. Oh, obviously, yeah. One of the best, really. (laughs) He is one of the best, but I don't think he's the most valuable to the organization because if you look, if when he got injured, the Pats were still able to be a not as good a team, but still a respectable team. I think they won about ten games 10 and 6 when Matt Castle was quarterback as opposed to the Colts who when Peyton Manning left they became the worst team ever so (laughs) it's just he makes a huge difference and I think he's a great player and he's going to be a hall of famer and he's one of my favorite players but I think that the Pats are going to be able to move on once we have Mallet or whoever coming in in a few years do you have full uh confidence in Mallet yet though I mean there have been some games. I know one game he got in 
had one attempt and threw an interception and stuff like that. But I don't I don't think that it's going to end up being Mallet. Every few years we get a new one, a new backup. I mean, I loved Hoyer. I loved to watch him on the sidelines. But uh, I think that we'll have a fresh young face coming in after Mallet soon. I, I, just, I just don't think that they're going to find the fresh face after um, – the Patriots have failed to do stuff with their with their NFL draft picks over the last couple of years. I mean, it's it's been infuriating to tell the truth. Yeah, we got Chandler Jones. That's pretty good. Yeah, it, it, that's pick. good. But really, what else? Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I don't see the Patriots going after that that NFL draft prize of that one quarterback that's better than everyone else. Where would you like to see the money we save on Brady deal spent? On the Brady deal spent? Defense or offense? Defense. Defense. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, the Pats have a great offense right now, and if it's if the if it's going to go to anybody on offense, it's going to be a re-sign Mankins or anybody on the line because they're really key, and a lot of people don't think of that, but it's pretty important. On defense, there are definitely some holes. We've had problems with defense recently, but it's getting better. So I think Belichick, as a defensive coach, is going to continue to uh, restructure the defense. I mean, I'd like to see a, a player come in that can just go for uh, – that Brady can throw deep to. I mean, I think that's the th- main thing we were lacking this year. And I think – but at the same time, we need to take care of the offensive line so that Brady can have the time to throw those deep balls. But, uh, yeah. I mean, Brandon Lloyd was okay this year. He was he was not – I don't know why people make it so he sounds like such a horrible guy. I mean, he had a lot of receptions, was key for the uh, Patriots at some times. But people are uh, – people want him out of New England like they wanted Chad Ochocinco out. I mean, uh, he had nine catches in one game, and that's pretty much Ocho Cinco's like, career h- here in New England. So I don't see him as an entity that we can just forget and cut. I agree. Great point. <laughs> Fabulous. Does this deal ensure that we'll keep Welker? I don't know if we even need to keep Welker, to be honest with you. We have a lot of receiving options, but the one that we're missing is obviously the deep threat. We have Vereen and Ridley. They can all catch the ball, and Woodhead. Hopefully we get him back. Julian Edelman, and we have really diverse tight ends who are can really do anything. Aaron Hernandez can run. Gronk is a tank. So. Some of the most versatile in the league. Uh, I don't think it ensures that we'll keep Welker. I mean, it depends on how much he's asking for. If he wants to be a max player, I think it's time to let him go. But, uh, I mean, the balls he drops in the playoffs are just ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what it is, but he's not, he doesn't come through in the clutch. And it really depend on what Welker's feeling like because I don't know. I don't know if he wants to stay after we decided to put the franchise tag on him this year. That definitely cut into his ego probably saying that we didn't want to pay him top dollar quite yet and that he hadn't proved himself but this year is definitely going to be something to see because it's his decision of does he want to stay with the Patriots hopefully win a Super Bowl in the next couple years or he wants to go get top dollar from a mediocre team moving on to the Red Sox Lackey still lacking his second effort in <laughs> In the middle of preseason, <laughs> had found the Red Sox and his ticket sales lost. Fans of the belie- beleaguered Red Sox, are, Boston Red Sox, aren't buying tickets. The team acknowledging season ticket sales in January were down 10% from last year. Will you be going to more or less games this year? I say less games because they're just deep. They're just digging so themselves a uh, deeper trench. Really, they um. You know, they're going to start losing faith in themselves, and I think it's going to take something a lot bigger to get them back in it. Well, I mean, I don't think they're a uh, uh, World Series caliber team, but um, they're much better than last year, so it doesn't make much sense why their sales are down. Um, but, I mean, 
I'm not a huge baseball fan, so I probably won't be going to many games. I'd love to go to the games. I mean, Boston fans have been a little spoiled lately. We Our teams are just too good lately, you know? They haven't had to suffer at all, and we had a bad season last year, but the Red Sox play in a tough division. The AL East, every single team could make the playoffs in the AL East, and the Red Sox were close. Well, actually, they weren't. They were close at some points, but I feel like we're going to come back this year and give a real run for it. Yeah, going back to the division, I mean, it's going to be a great year to see how the uh, Blue Jays go with their new faces and the the Rays with their killer pitching lineup. Um, it's just going to be really fun to see. The Yankees are always tough, but I'd love to go see some games, the interdivision games, because those are going to be the games to look out for, and uh, those are the games that are going to come down to the final final week of baseball to see who goes to the playoffs and who doesn't. Are you as excited about this team in year past, or are you waiting to see what happens in the real season to get into this team? Uh, I've been watching. I've, I've, been, I've been up to date with the spring training. I've got a lot of fresh young faces. Xavier Bogartis, he's been playing great, and Jackie Bradley's batting 600. It's crazy. We have some, we have some good young guns coming in. Now we have veterans coming in too, like Shane Victorino. I think he's he's definitely gonna get himself on base, steal a couple bases, steal a couple bases, and then hopefully bring in some runs to win those close games. Um, interest in the team has waned. Tickets for individual games are going uh, going for pennies on the secondary market, and season ticket holders have complained they cannot give away their tickets. The Globe said they <laughs> dropped the ball. They, the Red Sox, dropped the ball in the last couple of years with the way the team was run. It just seemed like they stopped caring about the fans. Phil Ferragudo, a season ticket holder since 1986, told the newspaper. The Red Sox won the World Series in 2007 and made the playoffs in 2008 and 09, but haven't been in the postseason since. Last year, Boston was 69-93 in the, in the fifth in the American League East. It was the team's first sub um, point five season since 1997. Yeah, it was definitely. It's definitely hard to watch uh, the uh, Red Sox sometimes, especially after the last couple years under Valentine and then the last year under Frank Kona. But they really brought in someone that the players appreciate and respect in John Farrell. That's the name, right? It's Al. Oh, no, no, you're right. You're right. All right, so John Farrell and. The, I think that the Red Sox will respond to that. There won't be any beer and fried chicken in the locker rooms under Farrell. I don't. I don't think. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we won't see another sub 500 game, uh, sub 500 season, for a while under this new manager. Hopefully. Thank you. Congrats to our DS teams for their postseason play. DS Hockey Raiders are still in the hunt for a championship. Shout out to Chris Williams. <laughs> Making it past the second round for the first time in 25 years. Congrats to the hockey program, and we will have an update next week on how they fared in their quest. Thank you for watching the roundtable this week. For all of us here in DSC TV studio, we wish you a good weekend, and go Raiders. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!